I'm Lippy. And I'm Grumpy. Together, we're Lippy and Grumpy do podcasting. In this news-filled episode, learning resuscitation using a computer, lockdown haircut disasters, the joy of Shrek, and never read the comments. So, Lippy, episode 20, and we've got a lot to get through today. We do. We're just building and building on the topics, you know? Yes, when I looked at the list over the weekend, I didn't think we had that much and we'd have to go back into our massive list of odd topics. Mm. But we seem to have got enough from the week. There's quite a lot happening in the last few days, which is of worthy of discussing by us. So obviously it's not stuff that's vitally important to mankind. but Definitely uh, not. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to start with going back to last week, and the old digging through the centre of the earth malarkey. For the fifth episode in a row. (laughs) Well, that's a bit of exaggeration, but not far off. Somehow or other, I found an animation that somebody put together of how far humans have dug into the earth's core. And it's it's a miserly 40,000 feet. Is that it? That's it. And this is an oil well. Um, It's only nine inches wide, and it's been drilling since 1970. And I guess no one actually goes down there either if it's an oil thing. Well, no, the bottom of it is 356 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than enough to overcook a chicken. Yeah, that's crazy. Interestingly, it would take another 60,000 feet to reach the edge of the Earth's crust. And there's another 21 million feet to go to, to the centre of the Earth. My God, that is... There's so much about our Earth that we don't know about. Well, it is a little bit inaccessible for many I reasons. I mean, you can't go to Screwfix and get a drill bit that long. <laughs> <laughs> True. It might be like, um, what's that film, Ice Age, where like underneath the Ice Age, there's dinosaurs living. There could be like another layer of life between us and the core that we just don't know about. That, that is entirely not possible, but hey <laughs> I'd like to think it is. I'm sure there's a conspiracy theory on that. Oh, almost certainly. We'll come on to those a bit later, actually. Davros got in touch. He was a bit taken in his Dalek master plan for the five galaxies in drilling through the middle of the Earth and creating a gravity engine. So much so that he's put it on the list for his invasion of Earth in 2150. Oh, no. So, unfortunately, we're going to go down in the annals of history as having instigated a Dalek attack on Earth. But Well... You've got to be known for something. (laughs) I'm not sure I want it to be that, though. No, definitely not. He was particularly taken also about your trouser incident (laughs) with vampires, as he he put it. And uh, he went on to talk about a series called The Rise and Fall of Reggie Perring for the 70s, where CJ's office, CJ was Reggie's boss, had some chairs that made a slightly odd noise as you got out of them. A squeaky noise? Squeaky, slightly squeaky noise, yes. Mm. Uh, regrettably then he talks about Weetabix and he reckons dry with butter our old friend Marmite not my friend Marmite and cheese that's horrific ridiculous Davros get a grip that is absolutely horrific and dry Weetabix no thank you no, you're not going to be invading the earth with that sort of pack lunch, sorry. Definitely not. Also, Screaming Tomato from Down Under got in touch, and I missed a message a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about dead cat bounces and the stock market. And he reminded me in the early 2000s, he invested in Marconi shares. Uh, they were going through a particularly traumatic period. Uh, he bought them, they doubled in price, and before the bank got the sell request they'd absolutely plummeted so he, he lost a, a amount you of money would, that he you, yeah you wouldn't want you wouldn't want that sort of you um, would be so result. devastated especially if you'd made the decision to sell knowing you were going to make a bit of money absolutely. and find out that it just took too long to go through yeah absolutely oh. and you know we're a bit spoiled today with the speed at which we can buy and sell shares mm. and currencies and what have you i was um suggested to buy my partner to buy some bitcoin because it had, had a bit of a droop um yes. and it was starting to go back up so i was like perfect and on this app that he uses there was like a 20 pound referral fee as well so like he got 20 quid for signing me up and i got 20 quid for joining so i signed up uh ever since i've signed up i've been losing money oh, it went yes. up the rest of that day it just went up and up and up yeah. and then it went all the way back down i think i've made about a pound 
it, it has been a bit all over the place. We, yeah. We've had some for a few years and we're doing very nicely at the moment. Yeah. Although there's not a great deal in there because I recognise that you could lose quite a lot. So mm, That is the thing, isn't it? And also, like, when do you sell? This, this is the thing I don't get. I'm like, oh, I've made 20 quid. I might as well sell them because then I've, I've got an extra 20 pounds. But actually... That's not the point. The point is to leave them in there longer and make a lot more. But at what point do you sell it and take that money back? It's it's tricky, really, because if it's going to be used as a currency, and this is the plan, I think, of Tesla to accept it. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, I had an email from a company that sells components for WordPress that they're now accepting payment in Bitcoin. Mm. Unless they change the price you could end up paying a lot more in a week for the same thing than you do today. So I, I don't see how that's going to work. No. But, uh, and also, I saw on the Elon Musk and Tesla and whatever, that I was going, planning on using it to pay people's salaries. But yeah. then, well, what point do you change? Because personally, I would not want to be getting Bitcoin as my salary. You can't pay your rent with that at the moment or your mortgage. Well, you can convert it into to, to a fiat currency, a sterling or, or whatever. But then you lose money doing that. But well, you would do. I, I think it's too early. I think mm-hmm. it, it's so new. It needs to shake out a bit before we do anything like that. It'll be interesting to see where we are in about ten years' time. Anyway, the funniest uh, thing I saw this week was uh, a message that came through to me, and it's uh, it's from a friend, and he says, "I found myself completing a computerized cardiopulmonary resuscitation exam for work, which was hysterical. I had to simulate reviving a patient." by depressing the letters Q and P simultaneously on my keyboard at the same rate that I would use my hands on the centre of somebody's chest wall before applying rescue breaths through my microphone. Oh, my God, no. And then calling for an ambulance by chef, which is the thing I always find a bit odd. I've done many resuscitation Mm, courses. Me too. You have to go through that process of pretending to shout for a bystander or for an ambulance, which I do find find amazing. What I find astonishing about that is it's quite imaginative, but on the basis that he's working at home and he's not going into the office, then how is that helpful? Because when you go into an office, you've got the people around that will need that help. So that's the Mm. time that you do that bit of training, not at home on a computer, because with the greatest will, pressing Q and P on a keyboard does not simulate what you have to do with a even with a resuscitation dummy. And I can imagine that a real person is very difficult. So yeah, we, massively. Massively. We had a good chuckle about that, I have to say. Mm, I've done the dummies before, and I feel like the dummies is nowhere near what it's like to actually do resuscitation on a, on a human being. I would imagine it's, it's certainly closer than QMP on a keyboard. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah. also, I almost failed mine because I wasn't strong enough to like get the yeah. chest to crack or make the noise. Yeah. I could have easily passed if all I was doing was pushing Q and P. <laughs> yeah, precisely. Yeah, it gives you no idea. It gives you an idea of the rhythm, but that's not the hardest bit. It's that actual amount of force, which is way more than you would ever expect. So also this week, lockdown haircuts. Now, I'm not going to get get into the uh, the wise hows and thank you very much of uh, roadmap out of lockdown. But I did make the decision, given that it's at least six weeks before I can have a haircut Mm. that I should have had one before Christmas and didn't so it was getting into a bit of a state and it was getting so heavy that my head was sweating at the mildest opportunity so wife of grumpy who has cut it twice during previous lockdowns quite happily quite well Mm. yeah the second time she did a great job I thought great great job takes Mm. a little bit of time but it's, it's not bad so anyway so she got going with the clippers and I heard this ah from behind me went Oh, three's longer hair than one. Uh, to find out, I have now got a number one up until the ear line, more or less, at the back of the head. And I do have a picture which I will post online. And so, oh my God, when she sent the picture through, because she sent your, the front of your face through yeah. first. And I looked and I was like, I don't know what she's talking about. She's done a really good job. It doesn't look that bad. And then she sent the back through and I was crying. It was so funny. <laughs> It's just so short. There's no even attempt at fading. She's literally gone, Mm. oh, I've done it wrong. So I'll just switch to three now and go three from here. (laughs) Pretty much. It it is. It's it's a haircut for Zoom. Let's put it that way. It's okay at the front. Thankfully, it should grow out of it before (laughs) you have to see anyone. Well, well, I I might have to wear a hat for a couple of weeks. We'll have Mm. to... 
we'll see. But what's even worse is there's a crease at the bottom of my skull, which just looks like somebody's drawn on it with a black marker. <laughs> it's very, very bizarre. So. But it did get me thinking about how many people are wandering around with uh, just appalling lockdown haircuts. Mm. And then I did see an article in the paper today where um, husband and wife had had a massive falling out over, uh, over a haircut. But it will grow back. It's not yeah, the end of the world by any exactly. stretch of the imagination. The other thing that caught my eye over the weekend was the Boeing 777 and the engine fire in Denver. I mildly heard about this. Uh, it's, I, I have a slightly morbid fascination about aircraft incidences. I'm not keen on flying myself for several reasons. And the thought of being in that plane terrifies me. No end. Nevertheless, I seem to want to watch videos and find out about stuff like that i don't know why and actually in some ways it's quite reassuring because obviously that was a major incident mm. on a plane and it landed and nobody was hurt uh, but there was some very close calls on the ground yeah. there's a picture of a massive part of the engine cowling that had just missed a house and oh. obviously all bits and pieces flying down but mm. interestingly i see over the last couple of days that in america and canada i think uh, 777s with Pratt & Whitney engines have been grounded and I believe we're not allowing them in our UK airspace. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, which is, is quite possibly extreme. But as often with these things, somebody came out with a video of a similar problem some months ago. So maybe it's a, maybe it's a design mm. fault. But uh, it is incredible at this age. Obviously, you can get films from the plane. You know, Otherwise, it would have been a a bit on the news and, and no real footage of it. Yeah. It's, it's astonishing and frightening. Yes, hopefully we won't see hopefully a recurrence okay. of that. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, the thing that was worrying me most watching it is that would the wing suffer any damage if the engine then... Because you can put the fire out. You know, yeah. That's a given. That's, that's very easily done. And there's probably limited risk with the fuel in the wing. But if the, the cowling coming off caused damage to the wing, would that... You know, if the wing comes off, that's it. It's a whole it's different just story then, yeah. Yeah, you're falling out of the sky. Not that I want to alarm anybody who might no. be flying <laughs> over the next well, few weeks. No one should be flying, so do be scared. Well, a few people will. But mm. <laughs> oh, well, that's another thing. I mean, some of them, you know, they've been parked up for a long while. So I wonder if these planes are a bit like a car that you haven't driven for a while and the battery goes flat and fuel's a bit off and all sorts of things. I hadn't thought about that, actually. They probably are. Well, they all extent. popped up in a line, so maybe they've got some chat running along, starting them all every couple of <laughs> weeks, just to make sure they're ticking over. Currently. Just driving so, them round, putting yeah. them back in. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And I know some of the budget airlines, where they're constantly backwards and forwards, so it's like a shuttle, mm. they're operational for so long, they have to turn them off and turn them back on again every now and then because of some computery type thing. Anyway, you had some thoughts about Shrek. Oh, I, that film... I was having a bit of a bad day yesterday, which would have been Tuesday. I've been stuck inside for too long and it hadn't been nice weather, but Tuesday was quite nice. I think the sun definitely gave me a little little mental boost. But I put Shrek on, changed my mood instantly. That is honestly, I think, one of the best films of all times. I think it is. And I think I can draw parallels with one of the characters in it and you. <laughs> And I, I don't think we need to have a poll to decide who I don't think so that either. is. No. <laughs> Mainly because I also sit there and quote every single line that Donkey says as well. <laughs> oh, I had you down a Shrek, not Donkey. Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> if anyone's Shrek, it's you. It's I'm Donkey. True. I've got a set of ears somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, I just... And then I kind of thought about it. And as I was watching it again, I was like, the music is great in this film. Yeah. Like, every time one of the songs comes on, you're, like, dance, singing along, and the humour's funny. And I actually think the same about the whole trilogy of films as well. I think the second one is just as good as the first one. I think it has good character development, and they introduce, like, good funny characters as well, like Puss in Boots. They didn't introduce, like, half ass characters. So... It definitely is up there with one of my favourite films. And yeah, I'm with you there. Shrek is a is a brilliant f- series of films, uh, very clever and very funny, mm-hmm. and and great because there's something for everybody. So if you take the kids to see it, it's uh, it's all good. And uh, somewhere we went some time ago uh, for a lunch. I mm-hmm. didn't tell anybody where we were going, and no. we rocked up at a prison 
the assassin. I think you may have let it slip that we were having food uh, because we also yes. had to pick, didn't we? Yeah. So we knew we were eating, but we didn't know where we were eating. Yes, yeah, so there's a charity called Clink, and they run restaurants inside the prison. So you have to go through, check it in, you have to mm. leave. And I think this bit is brilliant. You have to leave your mobile phones in a locker outside. Yeah. So you're nothing taken in like that. So there's no distractions. And you're served by some of the people serving there, and the the chefs are all serving inmates as well. Mm. I mean, the food was superb. The I food was say. absolutely like I still think about that ravioli that I had, yeah. which is crazy because it was so long ago. But every yeah. now and then, I'm like, that was some good ravioli I had at that prison that was cooked by an inmate. <laughs> Yeah, it was good. And yeah, there's no reason why it wouldn't be superb. No. Uh, I think, do we have plastic cutlery? Yes, yeah. Yes, plastic, we did, cutlery. Yeah, plastic cutlery. And plastic cups and things like no glass. That's that's right, yeah. And we were served by Mick the Scaffolder, who, uh, who's, who's, I asked whether he would be going on to do this once he was released. And he went, nah, is it too much money in scaffolding? Back to scaffolding, he probably went. But it is another skill. So uh, mm-hmm. anyway, I highly commendable charity, Clink Charity. I read yesterday they're extending it to another seventy nine prisons. Oh, which is we should brilliant. do it again. Definitely do it again. I would, yeah. Yeah. I think definitely. it's such a good opportunity for the inmates as well because they do tell you a bit about themselves and yeah. kind of like why they're there, obviously. But it's such a good thing that it's obviously the ones that are about to be released and they aren't obviously dangerous. They're not going to put some interesting prisoners in there, but they're people that have earned the right to, to be able to do it and showing that they, they want to learn and get new yeah. skills and they want to leave the prison and kind of develop themselves. So it is a yeah. really good and interesting thing to do as well as yummy. Yes, it was yummy. And uh, yes, yeah, great to support that. So, mm. uh, but I think that's probably our closest prison anyway. Sutton. Yeah. High Sutton. down. High down, wasn't it? High down. Yeah. Mm. I wonder if they do it at Broadmoor near me. <laughs> I doubt that very much. That's a Otherwise, different kind of prison. Yeah, very, very, very different. And talking about going rogue, I saw on Iceland's version of University Challenge, one of the contestants threw an absolute hissy fit. Honestly, I read this just before we started and I was so funny. It just reminded me like of Sheldon or someone, I don't know, of... Um, the Big Bang Theory just having an absolute strop and a fit because he didn't get the answer right and someone beneath him did. It was like that. Actually, that, that's a very good analogy, the one where he gets his two or three teammates who are not allowed to answer any questions. Yeah. Despite the fact once he's a physics professor in Russia. Yeah, it's very, very funny. So, yeah, so we'll put a link to that. But it's uh, you'd expect University Challenge to be apart from Jeremy Paxman, quite sort of calm. Um, mm. The contestants are, without wishing to be rude, a little bit nerdy. Yes, very in- highly intelligent humans. Yes, mm. yes, absolutely. Concentrate on knowledge rather than appearance. Emotions, well, yeah. Possibly emotions. Um, yes, who knows with this gentleman? He's probably been training for this moment for so long and he's got there with his teammates and they've just, well, they've all lost It's just an instant probably react a normal reaction to somebody who's put a lot of effort into something and then it's just all gone yes yeah or just got yeah disappeared by somebody else answering a question yeah (laughs) and it's unusual for icelandic people to be Mm. i know they they can be a little bit um what's the word not really crazy it's more eccentric i would have said Uh, yes they certainly get up to things in motorsport that most people will go whoa uh, well, yes, worth looking at some of their motorsports, motorsport stuff as well. But uh, yes, that was very funny. That tickled me mm. immensely. Because he smashed the whole podium down, didn't he? That he was sat on. Oh, he went ballistic. <laughs> I mean, he was, yeah, he was not a happy bunny. <laughs> funny. Very funny indeed. Uh, also quite funny was a story I was told of a meeting the, in fact, it was the Frozen Camper was in on Zoom. Uh, one of their colleagues in the meeting got up to do something. Obviously, they're all at home. Uh, somebody decided to shout, Alexa, set an alarm for oh. some absurd time in the morning. And uh, they didn't tell him. Oh, no. no Have they had a meeting did. since? I, I'm not aware of it. Uh, I will try and uh, dig up a bit more. Oh, I want to know what happens. So, <laughs> yeah. So I have to say we are not advising people to do that. No, definitely not. Not, not by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, it's funny. 
but it's also not at the same time. It's hilarious. You just hope you'd never get caught out with it. Mm. Uh, I know we had a work, we had a demonstration of voice activated stuff a couple of years ago. And a chap had set this up with his own Alexa and what have you. And he had to leave the room for a couple of minutes. And somebody ordered the biggest bag of dog biscuits you could order on Amazon delivered to his house. No. Yeah. <laughs> I bet that was expensive as well because it gets it's linked to your account, so it just charges oh, your yeah. account. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think you can turn shopping off, which is what I've We've done. got that off. Yeah. yeah. No risks. Yeah. We know what Chris's friends are like. We're not taking any risks well, for things like that. Well, you don't want to accidentally order a BMW M3, do you? I mean, mm. as much as it's a very nice car, it's a, yeah, quite a chunk of cash turning up on your driveway. Mm-hmm. I didn't order that. Oh, it says here you did. Yeah. <laughs> this is your name. <laughs> I was pleased to see that the new Mars rover landed successfully mm. at a uh, tenth of the cost of our track and trace system in the UK. Which is absolutely ridiculous. I'll leave that there. I'm not going to go into that, but it does seem a bit daft. However, that then did throw up the conspiracy theorists very, very quickly, saying that the land the rover landed in looked a lot like Canada. What? So they've taken the however much it was to create the rover... And then, and then sent it to Canada. Yeah, and set up some sort of studio in Canada. And a fake launched it. Yeah. I mean, again, we've discussed this before with conspiracy theories, that there's so many people involved, one of them is going to let it slip. Yeah, so exactly. How, how on earth do you think you're going to cover that up mm. in this day and age? You know, when celebrities can't go out to their bin in their pyjamas without being paparazzi shot then it's a weird meme being made of them <laughs> exactly yeah yeah put, putting the empties in the bin with a fag hanging out their mouth it's uh, it's not going to be possible to fake a mars landing definitely not but that led me to a conclusion about not reading comments oh yeah. and there was yeah there was a very nice article in the telegraph yesterday that somebody had written about why he's been missing the pub basically Mm. And he's a middle-aged man, his wife and children, but he likes the pub. And he likes it not because of the beer, although that is an attraction. Not because his mates are always there, because that is an attraction. But it's a place he can go to with the paper, a packet of crisps Mm. and a pint of beer, and just spend half an hour in a nice, cosy environment. Yeah. And not wishing to appear sexist, ladies like to shop, and I suspect they get joy from that. Mm -hmm. Not my idea of a fun day out, but an afternoon, not necessarily getting hammered. You know, you could have a cup of coffee or a hot chocolate at the Mm -hmm. pub. It's very nice with a book. Really nice way to spend a couple of hours. So I can understand completely what he was saying. However, when you go into the comments, there's things like loser and stuff like that. And you look at it and you think... What have we become as a society where somebody can't say what they're feeling without somebody shooting them down? It's just, it's wrong. It is really wrong. And there was a Twitter feed, which I found again from 2014, called Never Read the Comments. And it's absolutely right. The comments are where the... The drama is. Well, it's there's a phrase called doom scrolling, and I think that applies to the comments more than anything else. Yeah, I saw this very funny video in that was labelled uh, "What happens when internet trolls meet in real life?" So people that are arguing comments and things like that when they actually meet, and it's a video of two dogs and like an uh, electric gate between them, and they're like when the electric gate is shut. They're like barking, yapping and trying to get through the gate. And then the gate opens and they just look at each other and just sit there so calmly. And then it shuts again and they go straight back to yapping and like fighting each other through the fence. And I feel like it is exactly the same. Like when it's goes through that screen, you just feel like you have this weird protection that it doesn't matter what you say. You're just putting it online like it doesn't matter. And then when you actually see the person in real life, you would actually then get like the empathetic feelings and like sympathy feelings and you would never say that to someone's face i I think that's so true so so true that you'd never say or these people never say to somebody's face what they think Mm. they were anonymously posting online but why do it as there used to be a saying that said if you can't say anything nice say nothing Mm. i think 
it's all what a good maybe finding bits in there that don't make sense but actually criticizing somebody for their view that's just wrong yeah massively just, just absolutely wrong so since then i've tried not to look at comments mm. because it's just depressing quite but funny. then at the same time if you need a little pick me up it's quite funny to find like a, a funny article especially at the moment because there's so many articles about like the new rules and stuff like that and some of the people that comment in there it just makes you laugh well if it's a funny comment that's good more of a interesting comment if it's a slanging match i'm not interested yeah true no i don't want to be doing that but um yeah funny comments and i don't know where you go to find those there is actually strangely dedicated facebook groups that as like you're not allowed to offend somebody else that comments and they like post pictures on there and you're just allowed to put funny things about what you see in the picture or what you see in the post that's like doesn't quite add up or is kind of funny. I've got one about nails. Building nails or fingernails? No, like fingernails. Oh, okay. It's like dodgy. They People have like posted when they've gone to a salon and they've come out and they're like, this is not what I asked for. And obviously like accepting the fact that their nails don't look good. <laughs> And then loads of people commenting funny things on that. but Yeah, that, some of that's fair game. There's, there's one of the Facebook groups I look at occasionally called the Mechanics Bodge Group, something along those lines. And that, they're most, or they used to be, but obviously stuff's tightened up now, so they get banned automatically. Mm. But there was some merciless ribbing going on in there. But yeah. then if you've, you've posted on a group like that, you know the thing that you've posted is not up to scratch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But... Th- the flip side of that is somebody has a problem with something and they put it up online and there's a little bit of, of Mickey take in. But generally, people will give an answer if they know about it. So mm. you have to sort of wade through a bit of nonsense, really. But it's it's sort of it's kind of hard if that's way. right. Yeah. Well, it's not helpful in the slightest, but some bits are. <laughs> but... Every now and then. Yeah, well, I posted something on a camper van site last year when we were having trouble with the fridge in our camper van. And I was thinking of changing it to a um, compressor fridge, which uses electricity rather than gas. And I just said, has anybody got an experience of this? And this bloke came out with this very odd statement about you need to you, you need to leave it stationary for two days before you turn it on, which is going to be no use in a camper van if you're touring. Uh. And somebody really laid into him. <laughs> All I wanted was a bit of advice. I didn't want to start World War Three. <laughs> I'd just delete it. Yeah. Well, actually, the moderator in there is very good. Mm. And he just he doesn't stand for any nonsense. Uh, he just posted something today where he said, the only source of information we're going to take is from the government website in terms of when campsites are going to open and what yeah. you can do and what you can't. If there's anybody with any personal opinions, I'm going to delete them. Yeah. So that's the only place it's coming from. I'm quite right, too. That's definitely the best way to do it. It is, but you are making a rod for your own back. So no, no two ways about it. That's a lot mm. of work to do. Mm. And I, I don't envy him at all. Anyway, better news. We came before last. A new radio station was launched called Boom Radio. Mm. And it was like going back in time. So a lot of the DJs from Capital Radio from the late 70s and 80s Mm-hmm. Uh, are on there. It's, I think a group of them have got together and said, well, there's not a radio station for my generation, mm. and perhaps a little bit older, so why don't we start one? Which they've done, and it's brilliant. Mm. And what's really interesting is when I was on County Sound Radio, a chap called Roger Day, he started in pirate radio, so he was on Radio Caroline, and just seems to pop up every now and then, and he's... <laughs> He's on in about an hour and a quarter, which is great to see. So I'll have to try and get in contact with him somehow. But uh, no, shout out to them, because if you're of that sort of age, it's great. And it's a whole mixture of stuff. I tend to have it on in the office while I'm working. Um, I might try that tomorrow. Yeah, slightly tricky getting hold of it on a smart speaker. Um, Oh, Only Well, only that you have to say talk to Boom Radio, not play Boom Radio. Uh, because I think there is another boom radio and I ended up with something far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that, that's great. And a, and a gap field, because I've often wondered with Radio 2, so as you get older, you go from Radio 1 to Radio 2, mm-hmm. unless you try to recapture your youth and then you get <gasps> stuck in Radio 1. Or, or pretend something. that you like Radio 1. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but then... When you look at the DJs that are coming onto Radio Two, they're they're quite young, really, and the music's not really necessarily what I want to hear. 
Mm. So it has yeah, it will be starting to transition into my yes, youth music do. now on yeah. Radio 2. Like Spice Girls. Yes. Sugar Babes. Wow. S Club 7. I think they may have been on for a while, so it's more yeah. contemporary musicians. So uh, Yes, yeah, so Boom Radio, hats off to you. Well done. Thank you. Mm. And talking of music from my youth, there was a series of memes that have come from a company called EssentialAids.com, which... Uh, entitled Quadrocenia and it's based around the Quadrophenia film from I think it was the late 70s and the whole mods and rockers thing and it's a gentleman sat in a deck chair with his parker on on Brighton Beach with a zimmer frame with spotlights and mirrors and foxtails attached to it I'll post a picture of it (laughs) yeah it's a, a marketing initiative this company is taken and presumably they supply zimmer frames and bits for the elderly yeah, and a number of, number, yeah well jazz it up but it's a number of photographs on brighton beach with that theme in there the sort of the mods and rockers which is very very clever it's a cracking picture absolutely it is a good picture to be honest i did see it and think that's quite cool yeah it's a good film if you ever get the opportunity to see it that's uh Sting plays quite a prominent part, and a few other people you'd probably just about recognise still acting today. Just about, (laughs) yeah. And back to planes, I found an article that suggests quite sensibly that you should always sit in the back row, Mm. which I think is quite clever. I hadn't really thought about this. And the reason we've for that is is that you don't get kicked in the back by the people behind or you haven't got people jabbering behind you as well yeah and apparently it's the last taken seat people don't like sitting at the back because you're close to the loo and what have you so quite often you'd end up with two seats which is Mm. uh, quite an accomplishment in any form of public transport yeah definitely so top tip there i always thought that that wouldn't tip back if you needed to recline the seat yeah it Um, doesn't because it's right against the wall and also, I heard once from an air hostess that the back of the plane is the least safe part of the plane. That is true. So I'd rather be safer and sitting at the front. <laughs> well, the chances are that you're going to arrive safe and sound. It is the safest mm. form of transport per mile travelled. And as we saw with the Denver flight, you know, it's still still got down we've been on some flights where the legroom has been catastrophically bad and there this was a thomas cook plane and some of the seats are, are much closer together than others and i'm quite long legs so it yeah. was not only possible well, i think we sat on the tarmac for two hours before taking off it was we were on that plane for a very long time mm. so you know another couple of inches and not having somebody banging around behind you would have would yeah. make quite a bit of difference with that. My view, though, is that if you... it Obviously, it depends where you're flying to, because if you're doing a short-haul flight, then this usually isn't an option. But if you've got a kid or someone kicking the back of your chair and you ask very politely once you've taken off, is there any other seats that I can be moved to just so that I don't have them kicking the back of my chair the whole the whole journey but just politely you're more likely to get upgraded to first class Ooh, you've done a top tip early oh, <laughs> oh i even had a good top tip for today and it wasn't that oh so it's a double top tip oh it's a double top tip that is quite a good idea mm. although i think with some of the the short haul flights in europe with some of the cheaper operators i'm not sure they have definitely not class. i don't think many british airways ones even have first class for short haul no i'd be very surprised if they do I mean, some mm. of them will some of the bigger planes will but um, yeah there's short hops to geneva and the like probably won't no so having given us a top tip lippy have you got a top tip for us lippy i do i was quite excited about this one because it came from the lippy mind i came oh, up with it no. myself no. So it's going to be a, a corker, right? So, obviously, great news. We've got our plan out of lockdown and out of all the horribleness that we've had. But the one issue we do have with coming out of all of this is that a lot of people have put on a lot of extra weight. Oh, yes. So, yes. my top tip is to wear a fat suit and make yourself look bigger, do bad angles for the next kind of three months of Zoom. And then when you actually eventually get to see the people, they'll think you've lost weight. But you haven't. You've just made yourself bigger for the next three months so that when you come out of lockdown, you look skinnier. That's quite clever. I thought it was, to be honest. When I came up with it in my head, I was like, that is a shocking cleverness there. 
That is one of your better own top tips, I have to mm. say. There was an episode of Hustle, which is a program I've always oh, really love. enjoyed. Yeah, and I think we both looked at it as some sort of training documentary. We did. <laughs> For, for a while. And I seem to remember there was an episode where Three Socks Morgan mm. dressed up in a fat suit um, and they were scamming a couple with these diet pills. And he gradually, this, yes. over three or four weeks, the suits went down and down and down until he was yeah. down to his normal size. And they, they managed to fall them into paying a lot of money for these tablets. Diet pills, that. yeah. Yeah, so similar sort of technique, really. Mm. Trick people into thinking you're fatter now so that you they think you look slimmer when you see them. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to work for me. I think um, I think some v- vigorous running might be in order. Yeah. <laughs> I might start the couch to 5k and see if I can get off the couch this time. Mm, I did a week of that and then I gave up. Yeah, unfortunately I started it last summer in the hottest week in August, which was a bit daft. Um, so, yeah, it's probably better yeah. to start about now. And I have a related fun fact for this week. Mm. So if you're looking to lose a little bit of weight, if you bang your head against the wall for a whole hour, you'll burn up 150 calories. Is that from dead brain cells? No, I'd imagine it's from the action of tipping your head forwards and backwards. I feel like you lose a lot of brain cells as well, though. I'm not sure it would do you any good. And please, this is not advice. (laughs) It's just a fact. (laughs) It is just a fact. (laughs) Much better way would be to take your dog for a walk 45 minutes. So not only would you say 15 minutes. Apparently so, yeah. Mm. I guess it depends on the uh, terrain, whether it's very hilly or Mm. not. And the speed of the walk and the type of the walk. And the interesting, though. Although that's a fact, I don't think it's a fact that should be put into action. Also, how did they work that out? I don't know. That's an interesting thing. I don't know how it works with watches and other things that work out how many calories you've burned from doing some sort of exercise for a period of time. I feel like someone would have had to have done it, though, to actually like prove it worked. You would have thought so. I mean, also, there's a whole list of them here. So brushing your teeth for three minutes burns 10 calories. Mm, but then I wouldn't want to eat after I'd done that. I'd eat the 10 calories before I brushed my teeth, actually. Well, dancing on a dance mat for 10 minutes is between 50 and 60 calories. That's great, because I have a dance party almost every day. So you've only got to do that for half an hour, and you're up, you're up to the headbanging level of calories. That's good, isn't it? And you've got half an hour to spare. You could do a whole hour of dancing. That's a lot more fun than banging your head against a wall. Uh, not the way I dance. That's it for this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can help spread Lippy and Grumpy's view on life by leaving a review on your favourite podcast platform. If you're not sure how to leave a review, or if you download from Spotify, there's some help at lippyandgrumpy.uk slash review. And if you would like to get in touch, email podcast at lippyandgrumpy.uk. So it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from him. Goodbye.